And we're ready. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, écran. Oh. Non. Écran. Ma diapo. Sorry, I was trying to see how I can just have only one screen and not. Uh... Okay. Okay, so it's fine. Let's let's just do that. So hi everyone. Um, good good af good evening. I think because you already yes. seven p.m. in in Turkey. Yes. So I'm Wasila Sherwin. I'm uh, I'm uh, the director of marketing for Ecole Polytechnique, and I have with me Christelle. If you can introduce yourself. Yes. Hello everyone. I'm Christelle Legrand, and I'm the bachelor program director here at Ecole Polytechnique. So we're going to introduce you Ecole Polytechnique a little bit for those who don't know. And for those who know, that's just a quick reminder. And uh, that's a quick statistic to show you how important is it to study abroad within your curriculum or to have an experience abroad. If it's not study, it's work or something else. Uh, it increases your chances uh, to get uh, employment opportunities, more employment opportunities, and to achieve better and to have a broader uh, understanding of the world and different culture. But uh, I'm sure we, in Turkey, you have a lot of international students as well. So you always mixed with a lot of people. So Ecole Polytechnique, it's a very uh, long history, an institution who been created until Napoleon Bonaparte in 1794. It, it started with this ambition to build a new France, to have this new vision of the Lumière, they wanted to build a, a new infrastructure and top infrastructure. So they started with this premise, uh, um, with this premise ID to have top engineers, to look for top engineers everywhere in France within the country and to bring them together to build a new France. And since that, we've grown 230 years now. Uh, and um, we are number one in France and we always been, I think, since the creation number one School of Engineering for Top Minds. Uh, we used to be at the center of Paris, but uh, in 230 years we grown, we needed more space. And uh, we are just outside a quick train ride, 30 minute, 40 minute train ride. Yesim came to visit us on campus so she can share her experience. Um, it's a direct train, that's easy, and but you have a nice hill uh, at the end. Um, so international ranking, some people like ranking and I'm going to share uh, those with you um, just in case you are one of those. So THE 2023, most international university, what does it mean? It means that we have a lot of international students and you will see in our numbers later. Um, yes, we do have people coming from all over the world to study at Ecole Polytechnique. Um, you can also see us under this new logo, that's Institut Polytechnique de Paris. This is a logo that's been created five years ago. It's an institute, a new institute, that it's a group of five top engineering schools in France, and we are one of them. So if you see us in the ranking, that's also us. Uh, QS, uh, best world universities, we are number two in France and 38 in the world, so very good uh, position. Why number two in France? Because number one will be HEC, which is a business school. So this ranking take all the schools, different field. But if you go just into the field of science engineering, we will be number one. And then you have employer reputation. We go very up into the ranking. We are 15 in the world and first in France, according to QS again. So our value is excellence. Uh, so we want top, from the origin, we wanted top engineer, top minds, and this is the core value of, uh, of Ecole Polytechnique. But it's not because you go for top education that it means it can't be accessible. So we want this top education to be accessible and affordable for everyone around the globe and France too. So that's also part of our core. Human scale. So you will see the numbers uh, after. We are quite a small campus. It, that's not the big American universities or establishment or same for Asia or England. Uh, I show you the number after. So this is our global network, a glimpse of our global network because uh, this is where we have partnership or where students study um, after their bachelor degree. So they study at UC Berkeley, MIT, Columbia, uh, University of to Tokyo, University of uh, ETH uh, in uh, Switzerland, and so on. 
So that's just to give you uh, an idea. So our pillar, like I said, education, multidisciplinary approach, that's our core and that's how we've been built. We have about 3,700 students. When I say 3,700 students, this is for all the students, including PhD and everything. And all our teachers are PhD plus, and they still do research. So they are teacher researcher. We don't have teacher that do not do research. So that's also a specificity for us. And if you see the ratio, it's quite very low to make sure that all the students get the best outcome of it. Uh, uh, like I said, we are very strong in research due to our uh, origin. So we count 23 laboratories within our premises for Ecole Polytechnique. We do pure and applied research. But if you add uh, to that the other schools that are part of the Institut Polytechnique de Paris, we go up to 30. So students who love research uh, will be very happy within this institution. And then we also know that uh, our students are creative and entrepreneurs. So we created an incubator for startups that we call the DRAI. Uh, and it started in 2010. And we have, I think, much more than 400 uh, startups. So after Ecole Polytechnique, you can accomplish a lot. Uh, there are no limitations to what you have, so you can dream big. We have Nobel Prizes, we have people in politics. Uh, it can be French politician or also international politician because we have a lot of international com uh, students coming and they go back to their country and become uh, very successful in, uh, in different industry. We also have anything in the field of science and also in the field of business. So uh, the CAC 40 here that you see it's uh, the equivalent of the S&P 500 is the market for us. And like you see, one third of the leaders are uh, from Ecole Polytechnique. So that's a snapshot of our programs. That's the original program that been created 230 years ago under Napoleon Bonaparte and that have a military uh, aspect of it. Uh, this is the only program that is still in French, but it's open to international students. So don't limit yourself if you have the qualification and the qualities, you can apply to this program. You do not need to speak French to apply. We teach you French at the beginning. So this program, you can access it through different ways. You have to uh, take either take an exam after two years of preparatory class. So you take your high school diploma, you go to preparatory, preparatory class and go to the exam. Otherwise, you go to three years university, get a bachelor uh, degree or license in French, and uh, then, uh, not in French, sorry, in science, of course, everything needs to be science. Huh? We just call the bachelor license, uh, just to not confuse everyone. And um, so then if you have a bachelor in science, math, something like that, you can apply uh, to this program. That's a unique program, very specific. We can go into it in another presentation. But today we're gonna to focus on the bachelor, something that it's more international, uh, understandable uh, for uh, international student. So we have two bachelor uh, program. We have the bachelor of science that you see here, and we created a new bachelor, the BSMS dual degree with Columbia University. So we're gonna uh, go through those two ones. So I leave the floor to Crystal in uh, one more slide and then you can also ask your question please ask your question i don't see a lot uh, a lot of people in the chat asking questions so please feel free because i want it to be very interactive and if they wish they can also ask in turkish yes you can ask in turkish we have a lot of turkish uh, speakers here we do. I'm the only one with Christelle, I don't think. We, we have one people. question that just popped up. Um, so they're asking any option of mechanical engineering undergraduate in English? No. So <laughs> which engineering, engineering bachelors engineering are bachelor. available? So I maybe, yeah. Okay. So we, we, I'm going to show you just a little bit. Here I go back to this slide. So that's the only one in French. All the rest is in English. All our programs are taught in English, 100%. So now go back. So why uh, the program is unique and different? It's a three-year program. It's quite general in, uh, in Europe, but not in, uh, in Americas. Okay. So this is a three-year intensive track. 
if you do the BSMS with Columbia University, you get a master degree in four and a half years, which is also a fast track. So you save also in money. A uh, small group of classes. We have an average of, uh, we have lecture with all the all the students, but we also have small group of 15 to 20 students. Personal development team, that's very unique, and we're going to share more about it later. And we have a strong alumni network all over the globe, about 30,000 students or even more. So that's the class profile to give you uh, just a uh, a better understanding of uh, what we're looking for and what do we have. So, oh, sorry. So we we accept only 160 students. So we have uh, 160, that's the maximum capacity. We don't accept more and then you will see why. So, and then, uh, th so this year we accepted 156. 160 is the maximum, but if we don't find 160 students, we are state university, uh, so it's okay if we if we're not here to make money or just to take people uh, just to make sure that we have uh, we fit the maximum. So we just want to focus on quality and not quantity. Forty percent of of them are women. Eighty percent of them are international, so they come from outside of France, and most of them will continue studying into a master degree or a PhD track, and then. That's also an interesting number. One third of the students that uh, came into the cohort last year are minor, which means they got their high school diploma before 18. So they join us when they are 16, 17. So they start the, the year of the, the program very young, sometimes even 15, but that's more rare occasions. So Bachelor of Science program, Christel, do you want to explain a little bit more your program? Yes, I'll pop in there. Hello. Um. So um, the Bachelor of Science program, let's say, because we have to tell about those two now, Um, this one will be the standard one, okay? The one that was created in 2017 um, and um, which was um, thought like a, um, a research-oriented program over the course of three years, meaning six semesters, um based on the european um, standards and um which is a multidisciplinary scientific program so what does that mean that means uh we offer a double major program um three double majors um are offered mathematics and computer science mathematics and physics and mathematics and economics it means that um, students who uh, join the program, join the bachelor program, not one of those majors in particular. And then they have uh, introductory classes to all those three majors. Um, I mean, to all those four majors, because there's always math in common to all uh, in the first year. So they all study math computer science, physics, and economics. And then at the end of the first year, they choose uh, for their preferred double major. On top of this, they have the possibility to take a minor. The minors offered are biology, chemistry, and computer science for students who don't take computer science as a major. And um, they uh, also have other classes to take and validate, uh, which are uh, at least, or which are one language to learn. So uh, it can be, um, well, for students who don't speak French or who don't have a minimum of a B2 level in French, um, French will have to be the language class that they take over the, the three years. Uh, if they do already have a B2 level in French, then they can take another language. And there's a quite a variety of languages that are offered by the teaching department, um, specializing in languages and cultures. Um, they also need to take a humanities and social sciences class per year, uh, at least in the first and, se and the second years. A personal development class, I'm sorry. Uh, 
innovation management class is uh, a possibility as well uh, in the third year and sports classes are offered all through the curriculum uh, on a, um, a weekly base um, um, class uh, schedule um, and whatever sports um, that is it's uh, leisure sports it's not competitive sports um, so that's uh, about the, let's say, the main uh, structure. So what does that mean? It means that we are expecting students who um, uh, have a passion for math, but beyond math for science, um, who are uh, willing to, who are curious about discovering or learning science as a whole, and uh, who... Um, uh, want to explore those different uh, disciplines and, and um, we um, in, in the structure of the program there are other opportunities that you may not see here which are uh, in semester five so it's the full semester of the third year they have the opportunity to go and spend uh, and do an exchange semester abroad so in one of our partner universities um it's approximately half of the class uh, going abroad out of 160 students. Uh, and they have to go through an, an application process um, because they need to, uh, we need to make sure that uh, they have the, um, they fill the requirements of the partner university for the said um, uh, exchange uh, uh, program. And also that they, the, the choice of their courses is coherent with the project and which uh, with the, uh, the graduation expectations that we have in the program. Um, so that's an opportunity. There's another one uh, which is actually included in the program, which is a research internship. So a two month research internship that takes place in semester uh, six, uh, so in one of the laboratories on campus, but it can also be for some of them um, in, a, in a lab that is either abroad or um, in another place in Paris, because there are other uh, research institutions um, uh, around, um, around Paris. Um, and um, when we say research oriented, what does that mean? It means that um, professors are researchers at the same time. So the academic approach is also um, uh, very inspired or by uh, or influenced, let's say, by uh, research. It means that students have the opportunity to um, to do uh, lab work on top of lectures and exercise sessions. Uh, so they can experiment in the different uh, classes or in the different disciplines. It also means that we um, have, it, it's been two semesters uh, since we uh, uh, launched a class that is called, well, it's a project, uh, that is called um, a lab research project that they do um, in the labs um, a few hours per week all through uh, the sem uh, semester. And, um, and so they have already experience in research uh, quite early in the program. And they uh, can choose this um, as a replacement of an elective or as a, of a course. Uh, and then there is this um, bachelor thesis in the sixth semester um, helping them as well um, go into depth in one of the uh, disciplines that they of their choice, which can be one of the majors, uh, minors, by the way. So now we go to the BSMS dual degree program. Yes. So from uh, September, we will have a new class. Uh, this class will be um, have what well, will be. Um, offered <clears throat> three years on campus uh, at Ecole Polytechnique in France, and then three semesters uh, at the University of Columbia in the School of Engineering. So um, what differentiates both programs is that you have um, a, a bachelor program and a master's program from two different institutions. You take both uh, the best of both institutions, meaning the um, research oriented and uh, science uh, fundamentals offered at Ecole Polytechnique and then the um, uh, more applied approach um, offered by the, um, the School of Engineering um, and Engineering classes at uh, Columbia 
University. And uh, also you benefit from both networks and uh, from uh, um, the, the objective after that is really to get more into the workforce after those four and a half years uh, for students who choose uh, this, uh, this path. So um, during the bachelor program, um, there's quite a few classes, well, quite a lot of classes that would be similar to the ones that we offer already because they are real fundamentals that are necessary to get to uh, uh, whatever uh, higher and advanced um, programs in math and science. Uh, but there will be a specific focus on everything related to global challenges, global engineering, meaning uh, all the um, global issues that the world is facing today. So um, we count in here uh, sustainability, resource management, uh, art um, uh, artificial intelligence, etc. So we are looking for students who have a specific awareness to those issues and who want to tackle, let's say, those challenges and uh, be uh, the ones, thanks to their scientific background, uh, working on um, finding solutions to those uh, challenges. <clears throat> Um, and uh, we, uh, along with uh, Columbia University, have identified nine masters uh, master programs already that are the logical continuation of our three double uh, majors, double tracks, um, that will be open to the students pursuing this um, this program in particular. Okay, any question? We have a quick question, but that's part of the application. Um, so the application, we want a high school diploma, but you can apply without uh, having the high school diploma. So don't wait at the end of the year to apply, it will be too late. So you can apply as soon as you are in grade 12 uh, to the program. So we want top student with high potential in math, as you can see, Christian told you, it's all about mathematics and science. So we want people who are very interested and have a strong uh, knowledge of mathematics and science in general. But it's not because they are very interested in math and science that they should forget about the other classes. And we also look at the average academic. So we want people who are well-rounded with a strong average. To enter the program, because everything is in English, you need a C1 level. And to graduate the program, you need a B2 level in French. As uh, Christelle said, you, we will teach you French during the program, as a foreign language if you don't speak French, and you will need to reach a B2 level. And that's not impossible. We have a lot of students with zero, zero French who come from all over the world with different languages and different backgrounds, and they get to their B2 level. We, we made everything in order for that. Um, so ask your question, application process, straightforward, go on to our website, there is a page just dedicated for that, you apply reference letter, transcript, resume, personal statement, English language test, you are exempt of the English language test only if all your classes, when I say all, I mean 100% of your classes are in English, except of course for a foreign language class. If you are exempt, uh, then you are exempt. You just provide a letter from your school stating that all your classes are in English. And if you are successful, we call you for an interview. So if we see that your file is good and we want to know, learn more about you and assess you more, we call you for a 30 minute uh, math uh, interview. It will be 30 minute math problem to solve and an extra 15, 20 minute conversation regarding your uh, scientific background and culture and your motivation. Why do you want to join Ecole Polytechnique? Why do you want to join the Bachelor of Science that is specific as well and different? And math problem, it will be different math problem to solve. That's why it's very important here to, um, to fill up your resume on our platform because this resume is quite specific it's, it's a focus on what did you learn and what do you know in mathematics. So then you can tell us what you know and we can assess you regarding that. So this math prob those math problems to solve, it's more about assessing how you understand, how you can um, react, how you can find solution uh, rather than just getting the, the right number. So you have to 
think sometimes out of the box uh, and uh, show your capacities to and uh, your level of mathematics. So if you want to apply, if this is still appealing to you and you think you will be a right fit, you can apply starting in September. So don't wait when you are in grade 12, apply as soon as possible, especially if you want to be considered for scholarship, the sooner the apply, the more uh, chances you have. Because if you are, the money is not unlimited, so if you apply on the third round, so there are three rounds of application, September to October, and then October to December, and December till March. So on the last one, we have most, most likely less fund or, uh, to, to provide for scholarship. So if you want to be considered, apply early. And the sooner you apply, the earlier you will get interviewed and get your result. And for the BSMS, so far it was a split uh, application and calendar. So the BSMS was from September to January. So bear in mind, go on to our website or follow us on social media. On social media, we put all the application around when it's open, when it's closed, when it's the last week and everything. So uh, we are on LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter so far. So you can go there and uh, you can be updated without having to check our website all the time. Um, also, sp uh, different specificity. If you apply for the Bachelor of Science, you can't apply for the BSMS with Columbia. You have to choose either one. It's two different projects, like Christelle said. So you have to make sure to uh, pick the right one for you. And um, yes, that's about it. Any question regarding application that you can write on the chat and we can take directly if needed. I can throw out one or two, is that all right? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I, I know you require a, you know quite a high level, advanced level of math mathematics. Can you unpack that a little bit for us in terms of maybe APs or IB, um, you know, what you look for specifically in the applicant's background on their previous curriculum? Uh, I can for IB, AP, I think uh, Christelle will be more able to. So uh -huh. for IB, it's uh, better to have analysis and approaches. Yeah. So for IB, you need uh, three high HL uh, subjects mm -hmm. to earn your diploma. So if you want to go into Ecole Polytechnique for the Bachelor of Science, it's better to take uh, the three of them as uh, scientific classes. So math for sure, 100% and something else, physics, biology, whatever you think, uh, fit or computer science, I don't know what are the classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the maximum score for an IB uh, per class will be a seven. So if you can reach seven, that's very good. Uh, six is okay, but below it will be difficult mm -hmm. just to give you an average level. Did I, uh, Christelle, do you have anything to add on IB? Uh, no. Uh, IB sounds, <laughs> sounds okay. <clears throat> the the highest the grades are overall the the best uh, or the the maximum uh, chances candidates have. Uh, now about uh, AP, I, I mean what what Wasila just said applies to all educational systems. So it means uh, we are expecting to have students with um an advanced level of mathematics. Um, so that means they need to have studied um, mathematics um, continuously in the last years uh, before joining the program. Uh, they need to have at least studied one other uh, science class. Um, so I would I would say at at an advanced level but it's not always possible depending on the educational system so um it's important that they have uh, both math science classes and and um an interest more than an interest in those i mean it's more like a passion to um uh, to study uh, those it's the kind of student who likes to go beyond the curriculum so uh, have additional extracurricular activities that may be linked to academics at some point. And that's what we see a lot in the applications, like students uh, participating to or being members of uh, clubs, um, students having the opportunity, but they don't all have the opportunity. So we consider this as well. We take this into account, but uh, to uh, different kinds of competitions or awards or um, whatever it, it's um the kind of students who do whatever they can to learn more 
all the time uh, on those different um, uh, subjects. Uh, and then um, if you apply this to the um, American system or American high school diploma, then obviously um, having AP classes in uh, calculus, calculus BC and um, science classes would be uh, ideal. Uh, but um, from my understanding, it's not available everywhere. So it means... Um, that uh, at least there should be like um, honors um, uh, in well, those classes taken uh, with honors. So um, and uh, higher level uh, for um, as Wasila said before. And if it's a, maybe in a British system, then it would be math and further math. And and if it's in the French system, it's also like a concentration on math. Um, so that's very uh, important. But also it's um, important to have in mind that because they do have other kinds of classes on top of uh, mathematics and science, and they will have to validate those classes, then we are looking for students who um, have a well-balanced profile, well-rounded profile, and who uh, kind of um, are open-minded um, and uh, curious about learning in different types of um uh make connections and uh and learn uh, we also have students who do like um debating clubs we who uh, uh did the uh, model united nations who um you know so it's the kind of um and we do have that kind of activities as well um like which are not always science oriented like um we organize a speech contest and we include even we even include this in the in the offer of the personal development uh, sessions etc so it's really having students who are well rounded and passionate about math and science and who are skilled in those Can I add one I have question go ahead um can I, can I add one question to that? You have another question, sorry? Yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see if you guys um, evaluate maybe Turkish applicants in context of their high school. Like, do, do you actually track knowledge of the various um, institutions so you can evaluate each applicant in context or or what do you do instead? Um, so we uh, try to have to, to develop our knowledge of the different educational systems um, uh, all through those uh, application rounds. Um, what we do, so every file is assessed by two different examiners mm -hmm. uh, and um, examiners most of the time have uh, the files of of applicants from the same institutions uh, so that it's... Um, uh, easier to understand um, what the uh, high school uh, institution has to offer. Now, uh, we, as I said, we're still in the progress of uh, sometimes learning more about different educational systems and uh, learning more uh, of the, um, the institutions that prepare students uh, in the best way. Um, but, you know, there are so many countries in the world that <laughs> it takes a little bit of time. <laughs> But so we, we have, have a very good. We yeah. do have very good um, applicants from uh, from Turkey. Uh, yeah. for, for sure, that's what I can say. And we, I think, we do have a partnership with one uh, uh, one high school in um, uh, in uh, in Turkey as well. What do you mean by partnership? We have a few. Well, the um, uh, international relations office has. Uh, uh, identified a few um, excellent institutions in the world um, with which they have uh, created a partnership uh, enabling the institution to kind of pre-select uh, a few um, students um, from their institution and um, offering them the possibility um, of uh, um, being pre-selected um directly uh and uh, getting to the interview so the second step of the uh, of the uh, selection process only but we we have a few uh and uh yeah it's only starting well we've been doing this for something like three years or 
but getting to know um, different institutions around the world uh, better and better. Thank you. <clears throat> so yeah, continue. So why we take only 160 students? It's also because we can accommodate only 116 students today. Um, so it's very important for us because it's an intensive program. People come from all over the world. It's we don't want that to be uh, disturbed uh, from a different environment, having the stress to look for accommodation, to run between uh, the accommodation and uh, the university. So we want to make sure that they have the right environment and uh, they will be uh, hosted here on our campus. They have a building dedicated for the bachelor just for them. And it's a shared apartment, but uh, they will have their own bathroom and their own bedroom. So they just share the common areas. And at the ground floor of the part of the building, there is also offices with the admin staff, with the personal development team uh, to help them. So coming up to this, um, we, uh, we want to provide uh, and help students once they come into the program and to make sure that they succeed. We want to keep the, the level uh, high and the success rate very high, close to 100. So we provide, uh, we have a dedicated team for the student along the way of their three-year program. We provide tutoring classes. Everything is free of charge, it's just complimentary. So if a student struggle with some topic, they will have tutoring. They have a dedicated academic officer Christelle, do you want to develop on the academic officer a little bit? Because that's yes, specific. So the, yes. What we call the admin team uh, is made of different um, people working on different parameters, but all working for either uh, candidates or uh, students. Uh, so we take care of uh, students from the time they apply to the program and until the time they graduate. Um, during that time here um, at Ecole Polytechnique, there are three academic officers, one per class. Uh, that um, takes care of the students, um, of their, um, helping them with um, developing their academic performance, um, sometimes um, helping them when they struggle in one uh, discipline or another. But they're also here to um, um, give a lot of information about orientation, about how to make the right choices for the double major, for uh, the uh, exchange semester abroad, uh, and even for the master's applications. They give support to students with their personal statements and, um, and yeah, any kind of support that we can provide with uh, with the skills <laughs> that we have to uh, to help uh, to help out. Um, and uh, it's very important to um, for a student when uh, you're in a new university, um, far from home uh, at a young age, to be able to have people um, who are um, uh, uh, contact people who can answer any kind of questions. And I can assure you that they do <laughs> have quite a lot of questions. So uh, we're here to help uh, in that way. Okay. Can I give you a um, plug to the to the rest of the audience? Had just having been on your campus, I I have visited quite a lot of European universities, UK universities, and um, it was extremely impressive to see the level of care, the pastoral care, and um, you know support systems for students, international students, because I don't see that anywhere outside of the United States normally. So this was amazing. No, yeah, thank you. That's very nice to, to hear. So yeah, to complete that, we have also the personal development team, which is a, a team of six people that are available for the student 24 hours seven. So there is always someone on call for the student. But beside of just being on call, those are, this is also the team that uh, you can find on the ground floor of the building. And they are there for the student from I think uh, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. in the evening. And they can just go and uh, talk to them about anything if they have any per personal issue or uh, issues uh, that they want to share. They are here to for them and to help to find them solution, not just to talk. Because if they want also medical care, we have medical facilities, we have psychologue, we have everything. And we have the basics, which is a unit dedicated for international students to help them with uh, all the paperwork. France is famous to be a... Uh, 
very strong with admin and uh, that's why we have a team to help international students to navigate all the administrative uh, uh, incomprehension for international students and sometimes it's also hard for French people to navigate. So, so that's why they are here for. And the campus life is very rich. We have like you see a different program with a, uh, with a strong history. And uh, the program, the bachelor program, even if it's young, soon to be 10 years old, uh, they have a strong history and um, a healthy, healthy environment. Um, I want also to add that the bachelor program, it's not a competitive program. Once you enter Ecole Polytechnique, any of our program, there is a lot of support. Support between each other, between students, uh, to help each other to succeed. There are no uh, cut off at the end. So everyone wants to uh, help each other to succeed, to get the, to the next level. So that's why there are group of uh, working groups. And uh, there are also the second year who will help the first year to accommodate to this new life, to ask them questions and be available. We have also the third year who will help also the second and first year. So it's a good spirit. It's a good and healthy environment. And that's why we have also the academic officer and personal development team to be there to make sure that this is the environment that they stay in because that's the core of our, our school within all our programs. It's not about uh, who will be the best or top of the class. There are no grading like that. Everyone will, will get there in the best environment, hopefully possible. So we have a lot of clubs. So there are a lot of activity, a lot of events going on in uh, within the campus. There are a lot to do. We have a lake. It's very nice in the summer. Yesim, you came in uh, not so summer, but trust me, in the summer, having a picnic next to the lake, it's, it's very nice. And the lake, it's also um, available for sport activities, uh, not just uh, uh, eating nearby. You have a museum, a library, restaurant, and a lot of sport facilities. So I'm going to develop the sport facilities uh, a little bit, but bear in mind that it's an intensive three-year uh, program. So I'm sure you will have, because most of the students that I talk to, they always say, oh yeah, I was able to do some sport outside of my classes, but there are hours for some of the sport and uh, depending on your agenda. So we have a dojo, we have armory equipped with fencing. So you can do some fencing, you can do air shooting, you can do rock climbing, tennis, badminton, uh, horse riding, uh, parachuting even, because remember we are military school, so sport it's uh, the core of uh, our our identity, if I may say. So beside that, let's come to the numbers. Uh, that's also very important for everyone. And like I say, we want to be affordable for everyone. And I know in, in Turkey, the economical uh, situation makes some switch and transition to study more into Europe. And that's a good thing for us as well. So we're very happy. <laughs> I believe that European education uh, have a lot to give and not just American. And it's a completely different approach. We are more into the theory, uh, having good foundation, good basic, and um, to open a lot of doors after. So European uh, passport holder, so if you are binational or anything, that still apply. If you have Turkish and European, you will have the 15,400 per year. And if you have just uh, international passport, you will be 18,800 per year. So that's why I say apply early if you need scholarship. Those are the scholarship. We have two, we have the excellent scholarship and women in science. So if you are a woman, don't stop yourself to study math and study science at Ecole Polytechnique. We love having more uh, female within our campus and have a good balance between male and female. So those are scholarship opportunities for students who are admitted with honor. So it will depend on the admission process and what you get. So also if you are uh, in need, if you can't afford the tuition fees and things like that, you can apply for tuition fee waiver. This is uh, will depend on the household income. So you can uh, put for it. There is everything on the website uh, that uh, can help you to navigate. And there are also some private uh, grants and uh, private institution that offer grants. So 
I know different countries, there are some students who can manage to come and study for free. So you have to look around if there is anything available in Turkey. I'm, I'm not sure about it. Then outcomes. It's also always important to know where you go after your study. You can stay with us, of course, you can continue a master degree at Ecole Polytechnique. We have 10 master degrees and some of them will stay as it's listed here. But some of them will want to go for a new endeavor and they end up at Barclay, MIT, Yale, uh, Caltech, and so on, just to name few Americans, but also uh, also British uh, ones, uh, very good King's College, and so on. So top international university. Uh, and uh, I discuss with the student when I go abroad uh, with uh, Christelle during our trips, and uh, they realize and they are very grateful and thankful about having this opportunity to study at Ecole Polytechnique mm -hmm. because they all say it gives them the right foundation to be um, to have it at ease after when they're into their master program. It's so much easier. They say now I'm more relaxed because I have the right foundation. So even those who are in the top university, because those were that we spoke to. So they are like, okay, I uh, I have the hard time at Ecole Polytechnique. Now I'm more relaxed for my master's degree. I have more time to accomplish and to think because you gave me the right foundation and the strong foundation. So also, this is just some names uh, that give you uh, uh, a better understanding of uh, where they can reach and where they can go. But because we are double major as well, that's very important to note, it opens a lot of doors. So we have people studying uh, finance, studying mechanics, studying uh, biology, biomedical or things like that. We have different fields. We have a list that we can put later on into uh, our presentation and uh, Christelle maybe can develop, maybe she knows a little bit more where students go after that. Um, yes, so I can elaborate on this a little bit. Um, I just want to say that Lunette has joined. I can see her. Ah, oh, here you go. One of our third year students, and she may also uh, uh, share her experience there uh, after if we have any questions or. Um, Thank so... you for joining. <laughs> My pleasure. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Uh, so in terms of outcomes, um, what you see here is the list of universities. It's not all of them. Um, what we have um, for sure is that uh, we've had four classes graduating uh, since the, um, the beginning of the program. And uh, from the first class, there have been uh, quite prestigious outcomes uh, all over the world um, in uh, master's programs, different kinds of master's programs so it can be phd tracks as well as masters of science uh, masters of engineering masters of philosophy masters in management masters in finance etc so um it um it's a sign in a way that the program uh, opens to uh, opens a lot of doors um, is not um, preparing everyone to the to do the same track uh, in the end of the program. That is obviously thanks to the double major. That is obviously uh, thanks to different electives uh, that students can choose and uh, to the different minors that are offered. So um, it means that um, in terms of disciplines as well, it's very balanced between mathematics, between uh, uh, physics, data science, um, computer science, uh, bioinformatics, um, financial engineering, etc. So um, every uh, kind of discipline and sometimes a mix of disciplines uh, that students have been able to uh, study uh, during the program which um, I remind you is very multidisciplinary and enables this kind of outcomes. I don't know, uh, Lunette, if you have any um, anything to share about this, uh, discussing with other students who uh, yeah. are in the process of uh, applying to master's programs. Uh, some of them have already received offers, we know, uh, or maybe discussing with alumni about this. You... And can you share a bit your background, Lunette, so oh, yeah. everyone yes. understand where you come from, what's your uh, level, what are you now, and everything? 
Okay, sure. So my my name is Lynette, as Beef said, and I'm Japanese and American. And I was born and raised in Tokyo in Japan. Um, and then I came to France for the bachelor's degree, although I did attend a French school in Japan, so I spoke French fluently before coming here. Um, I'm a mathematics and physics double major, and I'm currently in my third year. Um, I hope that's all the background that is needed. No, yeah, that's good. That's good. At okay. least so they can know and understand. And if they want to ask more into math and physics, they know you're the right fit. <laughs> exactly. And uh, I can always refer them to other majors if necessary. Um, as for the master's and graduate applications, I'm not sure I can really add much. I would just say that um, th for our cohort as well, people are getting pretty good admission result results. And um, as Christelle Legrand mentioned, uh, we really have a variety of choices that we can choose for uh, choose from. I have friends who are applying to you know physics, applied math, pure math, finance, all of them. Um, so you really have plenty of choice. So it's not something to worry about. Um, I have a few questions that I want to address here. Uh, if you, if our school doesn't offer classes in English, but we have proficiency in English, will we be rejected? No, of course not. You can come from uh, from Laos if you want and just study in Laosian all your education and have no proficiency in uh, in uh, French and still come and study. You just need to have the right level of English, which is a C1 level. So you have to take an uh, English test and uh, prove that you can understand the classes. That's why we want you to have a C1 level. But yes, uh, you don't have to study in English to come to our school. Turkish, it's uh, very good. And uh, just study at home English or whatever, watch TVs, movies, and you will get there with the English level. Uh, Admittance, this is in Turkish, sorry, I can't hear. Uh, hearing about a collaboration with an institution in uh, Turkey, would you mind sharing the name of the high school? That's Christelle or the international department who can share with you. I can have a look, but we don't have it in hand now, I believe, or, unless Christelle says so. What Do kind of high school? Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry? The name of the high schools? I, I don't have the list now with me. Would me... Turkish ones we can yeah 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 uh, no and I have one in mind but I think I am going to mispronounce it it's like <laughs> a very long name starting with a b like Belkazir or something like that but I'm not sure I'm saying it the right way so I have this institution in mind I, we I look think... we look and we get back to you I think we know which one that is what is it Yasim so I, I think you're talking about I think you're talking about Bahçeşi here yeah, I think <laughs> I would never be able to pronounce it this way. Okay, but yeah. We would love to bring you to Turkey to show you some of these schools. Would you like to come and join us? Inshallah, we will one day. <laughs> love that. Next yeah. tour. Hmm. Uh, do the fees you, sh uh, you shared include housing? No, this is just the fees for the program. For housing, you have to count an extra, let's say, 580, I believe, for rent, but you can. Uh, add uh, financial help from the government. I don't know, Lynette, if you can share a little bit about that or not. Uh, yeah, but the, a, I, I can. There's a yeah. financial aid from the government called the CAF, C A F, which almost all students um, can get. So depending on your needs, uh, you might get a couple hundred, one hundred um, euros off housing every month. Yes, or less, a bit variable, but yeah, it's it's, it's very nice. Yeah, it's almost 100% of students who will get it. So between one to yeah. 200 a month, so uh, 600 minus uh, to uh, 100, let's say. Oh, sorry, Crystal, you already replied. Did you provide housing or does the student find their own? Like we said, yeah. all the students don't have to look to uh, get to the hassle of looking for housing. We have guarantee housing for everyone. So if you enter the program, know that you have your housing and your bedroom uh, ready. Is our school does not offer classes? Uh, that's we reply. Okay. Is it possible for your graduate to find jobs in France after graduation? You will have a B2 level. So yes, it's possible. Nothing is impossible to uh, to work in France or even in Europe. I think it can open door. Christelle, you want to add something? I think that's linked to visa, uh, and I don't, I don't have that answer. I'm sorry because more than ninety percent of students pursue with studies after the program, 
I know that a few of them um, do work after, and I know that a few international students are among those who work after. I have a few in mind. Um, so it certainly means that it's possible to stay for some time in France and get a job. But then I guess um, renewing the visa, oh, you may have a visa, Lunette. Renewing the visa is a, an annual process already as a student. Uh, and so there would be something to do for sure at the end of the studies to be able to make it longer. So I know for the master degree, you can study in France after. I don't know if we have the same uh, for the bachelor, but I would believe so if we have it for our master and the Cycle Ingenieur. It's a, a visa that allowed you to work after that. But we, 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 can, we can double check. Sorry, Lunette. We don't have a visa that allows us to work after. In order to get a visa, I think, to stay in France, you would have to find a job first and then using that job contract, get a working visa. So it's okay. problematic, but I'm sure it's possible. So it's a possibility. We can confirm. You can send me the email or ask Yassine, and then we can elaborate a little bit more on that. Uh, yes, anything sure. else? Any more question? Yesin, do you want to share your experience? How would, and why did you come? Yeah, I would love to. Uh, like I said, I did mention this in Turkish in the beginning to the audience, but you know what's happened with the Turkish economy is that a lot of a lot of families are um, steering toward other options outside of the U.S. And now we're increasingly hearing the U.K. might also be a little bit too expensive, but there's amazing options um and I, I i don't want it to sound like it's sounding right now but this is this is an excellent institution obviously so i think yes. um we've already discovered it in turkey and i think the demand is going to um, become a lot higher because it just i mean look at the outcomes it's it's a it's a top university in every aspect possible with proper pastoral care students are taken care of everything is very thoughtful um so it just, you know, when I viewed it, when I went and visited, I was just struck by the attention to student care, which is normally absent from a lot of U.S. institutions, a lot of um, European institutions. I was impressed at our um, dorms. I was also impressed with all the sports facilities, too. So just I, I think it's a wonderful okay. environment for for anybody from from Turkey, from any of our schools. Lunette, do you want to share a little, uh, your, a little bit of your experience? Why did you choose the program? Uh, how did you discover it? And uh, what do you like and enjoy about the program? Sure. Um, I just, first of all, I wanted to bounce off of what uh, Yassim just said. The housing really is very good. I think uh, we are very spoiled. We have our individual bathrooms. We share one kitchen amongst four students maximum. It's a very comfortable housing situation, which uh, I'm very grateful for especially since it's quite affordable compared to some other countries um, or institutions. So why did I choose the bachelor? Well, I really liked that um, it was a very international school. That's something that I specifically wanted to look for because I come from a pretty diverse cultural background and I knew that I would feel most happy and at ease surrounded by people who are also like that. Um, I also, I knew about Polytechnique as a school because I come from a French educational background. So I knew that the education would be of good quality. Um, and that's all I can really think of right now. I think that was enough for me to want to apply here. Um, and um, yeah, the, the sports facilities are indeed excellent. Um, we have weekly sports sessions. I think you've probably talked about them, but it's yeah. more like joining a club than like PE that you would have in high school. And um, through that, for instance, I've, um, I've taken a lot of boxing classes and have gotten very good at boxing and it's been a nice way to balance my studies. Um, yeah. And um, my experience has overall been positive. So I'm a third year student and I mean, I'm still happy to be here. So where do, where do you aspire to go afterwards? Well, I'm currently hesitating between an applied math program and a physics program, but I think I'll end up choosing the physics program, which is at EPFL because yeah. it was my top choice when applying. Um, so yeah, I think, um, so during my time, so this program is very research oriented. And so I do see myself going towards a research path just because this is what I'm most used to and what I like right now. Um, but that's also something that I'm thinking about still. So I'm not sure if I'll do a PhD, but I'll do a master's for now. 
did it open more doors and vision and into the world of science or even personally for you? Definitely. Actually, so when I applied to the bachelor and when I accepted the offer, I came thinking, okay, I'm here for physics and hopefully the math will be okay. Um, and I think a lot of students came thinking, oh, I'm here for a sudden, sudden major, hopefully math will be okay. But I realized by pursuing pure math here and taking really serious math lessons that math is really awesome. And I learned to really love math, which is something that I didn't expect. And uh, my roommates also share this opinion. So what's the origin from your roommate, if I may ask, because you have three other uh, roommates with you, yeah. just so, so my... they have a background understanding of people, where they come from? So my roommates are Romanian, Serbian, and Georgian. Okay, so mostly Europe for you. Yeah. And girls are separated from boys. Girls are separated from boys, yes. Although you do, um, I it's not uh, particularly encouraged, but you do have the opportunity to change roommates or change apartments if you want, I think after the first year. Um, I'm not exactly sure how it works because I believe it's getting more complicated to do this, but um, you are able to change roommates afterwards, in which case then you can have mixed apartments. But when you enter, girls and boys are separate. Okay. Uh, if you're admitted to the bachelor program, can you switch to the integrated master program with Columbia? Uh, if you're admitted to the bachelor of science uh, program, that's case by case exception that Christelle can develop. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have to choose. <laughs> No, but, and I was trying to reply to this. It's easier if you can, if you took, <laughs> you can elaborate more. Um, so, um, so we, we, the question is, um, if you yes. want to switch between Bachelor of Science okay. and Columbia. Uh, sorry, yeah, because I was also about uh, automatic acceptance into Columbia or not in the BSMS program. Um, so, um, Actually, um, this is not what we encourage. Um, we ask uh, applicants to choose between both programs. Um, what we, we, we I think um, candidates really need to think what their project is. If they already know uh, what, or if they have very special, um, specific um, uh, commitment to one of the causes uh, we mentioned before um, about um, earth, um, environmental issues, uh, resource management, uh, all that kind of things, sustainability, etc. Then I guess um, that um, awareness will take you to the um, to the end of the dual degree program. Uh, if you in, are in the process of being passionate um, about math, science as a whole, not on knowing exactly, uh, choosing the double major system because it enables you to explore different disciplines, to go into, into depth in different disciplines, etc. Then, um, and, and need to take the time to, um, uh, to develop your own project, uh, the the disciplines you want you want to know more about, etc. Then I guess the um, three year program, so bachelor program, standard bachelor program, might be a good choice because um, after you can decide to apply to different kinds of universities, different kinds of programs. And you can actually also decide to uh, apply to Columbia University in one of the masters that are part of the um, of the dual degree program. So um, it's really about the project. It's really about um, um, making the right choice. We 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 know that when you are. 17, uh, 16, 18, uh, sometimes uh, it's not easy to know about what you want to do um, in the next uh, few years. Um, and uh, we do have uh, um, quite a few opportunities to meet individually with students who have uh, that kind for, we, for whom that kind of uh, questions arise. Um, so we wouldn't do like um, open, we wouldn't open the doors to move from one program to another as an automatic thing or as an option that is available to everyone. Um, but if we identify one student who uh, really um, 
has a revelation <laughs> at some point of the program, then we may um, discuss this with the student, but it won't be automatic. So don't go into one program thinking you can make the switch easily. No. It's a case by case and it's it's need to stay an exception. It's it's project based. Yeah. It's all about making the right choice of but but that's true for any kind of program you will be thinking about when applying. You, have, you need to have to think um uh, globally. <laughs> I mean have the um global view about this. We know that you're young and uh, so maybe it's easier sometimes to uh, just keep it open and you can have that with the Bachelor of Science because with the Bachelor... Lynette, you want to talk? Um, you raise your hand. So I'll, I'll go after yeah. you finish, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. So yeah, we know you can... Um, but with the Bachelor of Science, that's the beauty. You have a three-year program. You have a double major. You can add a minor if you still want to keep it open. And it will open a lot of doors. So if you want this way, but if you know what you want, if you know that you want to do one of the nine, 10 uh, major of uh, School of Engineering at Columbia University, go ahead, just go directly to uh, what's the right path. And uh, yeah, go ahead, Lynette, sorry. Um, well, it's a bit unrelated to the current topic, so I'm sorry about that, but I just remember yeah. something that I wanted oh. to share because it's something that I really would have liked to hear when I was applying. Um, it's that it's very, it feels very, because of the environment here, because of the fact that there are so many laboratories on campus and it's so easy to talk to the, we will and also organize something similar and, uh, for their student and, uh, no, no, and like, a, like the a partnership. Yeah. Perfect. So I, I will just let somebody nudge somebody there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, then I pass it to the international division for the we'll partnership. Do. We'll do. Thank you. Understood. Thank they are you. the one managing. Mm -hmm. Uh, when would uh, should we apply for scholarship? At the same time, then you apply for the program. You apply for scholarship, I believe. No, Christelle. Well, she's nodding <laughs> her head. No, for now it's <laughs> for now it's uh, once you get the result uh, about admission in the program, but it may change a little bit. We're in the process of making a few evolutions uh, in the financial aid process, so. It's either during the application for next year, I mean, or uh, right after you get your results. Depends on the tools that we have available to make this possible from the uh, application phase. Any more questions before we wrap up anything? We we really want to take the time to uh, really go into detail with uh, all the questions that oh. you have because we gonna start application soon. So you need to have the better understanding of what we can offer, what other university can offer. You can uh, check the market and uh, then make the right decision. So feel free to uh, ask all the question. For the third period, there isn't any scholarship. Uh, there are less chances and uh, less chances to get scholarship. We, we repeat it uh, many times. If you want scholarship, if uh, you want to be considered, apply the sooner, the better. Oh, I've got one. Uh, perhaps if you if you receive an um, acceptance, you know, how, how long do you have to accept the acceptance and put down a deposit? <laughs> it's most of the time something like, um, well, it's in two phases. The first phase would be something like one month or one month and a half after the admission results. Okay. And that would be a first um, uh, deposit to pay then. How and, much is the first deposit? Uh, the first deposit is uh, 1,500 euros. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the second deposit is the same amount for now. And it's uh, due early, uh, early July. So it's really uh, con about confirming and it's at the same pla same time as uh, doing the whole registration process, yeah. administrative registration process. And and I'll say, based on all the European schools I know, one and a half months is pretty generous. It's a good good amount of time. I think it's because we have to deal with financial aid applications yeah. um, before um, before um, so that so that candidates. Yeah. Can um, can confirm their place, knowing uh, what would be uh, the financial aid available mm -hmm. to them, or yeah. confirmed to them. Yeah. Well, that's very good for for students, I think. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, quick question, will, we, will everyone have an interview? We interview only people who go to the next stage. So if you submit your application, it's a yes or no. So if it's a yes, you go to the interview. If it's a maybe, you go to a commission who will decide if it's a yes or no. So you will have teacher if if we not, if, because how does it work? Christelle, I think she explained a little bit. You submit your application. Your application is reviewed by two different, um, uh, how do you call it, Christelle? Help me there. Examiners. Examiners. So uh, it's reviewed by two different examiners independently. They don't meet. They review the application, each one on their side. Once they review the application, they give their um, their notation. They will say yes, they will say no, they will say maybe, I don't know. So if they both said yes, it's good. You pass, you go to the next stage, which is an interview. If they both said no, you get rejected, you have no interview. There are no point to go to the next stage because that's rejection. If one said yes, the other said no, you go to a commission and the commission will meet and then we're gonna discuss and we're gonna try to decide if it's a yes or a no. And then saying, if it's a yes, we take it to an interview. So not everyone go to an interview, otherwise uh, Christelle team will have a lot of work to do. <laughs> already have. <laughs> and she's already <laughs> having so much. Uh, how much is the deposit you get it? What are the requirements for the BS plus master program? The same requirement than the, the one for the BS, uh, the bachelor program. The requirements are the same. The only difference here, instead of having three questions for the personal statement, you will have four. But the most important, the requirement is to, uh, five, sorry. Uh, the, mo the most important is the requirement is to have a project and to show in your project what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. And it will be the same for the Bachelor uh, with uh, of Science. We want to see your project, your passion, what you want to accomplish, what you want to do. So same for the, the, for the other one. And we told you the other one, it's more focused for people interested into, like we said, global challenges, uh, passionate ad addressing about the world, most children challenges, sustainability, environment, conservation, resource management, artificial intelligence, climate change, and so on. So get inspired by the programs here to make a good uh, personal statement, make it very personal so we can see the difference. Do our references letter have to be both from science, math teacher? Can it also be from another subject? You entering a science program, so you have more chances if both are from a science teacher. If you want to put math and, I don't know, history, that's interesting. That's not what I would recommend if I was an applicant. Yeah. And I'm sure Yasin will agree with that. Yes, vehemently. But if that's the only way you have, why not? We <laughs> still need to reference later. <laughs> Uh, any any other question? Where, where your reference letter came from? Where, uh, uh, Lynette? They were from my math and physics teacher. So okay. pretty typical. Makes sense. Yeah. We want to evaluate. We want to know your knowledge in science. Uh, if you're good at, uh, at dance or music, that's very good for you. We would love to know, but outside of the reference letter. You can specify, I love to, I enjoy uh, cinema, acting or whatever. That's a plus as well that we like to see because we will feel like, okay, he's accomplished. He's feeling, he's happy. He's a happy student, not just uh, uh, love into science. We can, uh, he can interact with other, be a good match for the whole group. But, and, uh, perform, yeah. and perform in the different uh, events that we have. Yeah, uh, I'm like musician. <laughs> Yeah. Everyone shows their talents. Lynette can uh, confirm this, I think. What's your talent, Lynette? She has uh, don't ask me. <laughs> that's, that's very difficult to answer. Beside the boxing. <laughs> but um, there are plenty of opportunities. There's uh, events where students perform, dance. There are events where students show their art. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. And there's no jealousy. Everybody is so supportive and encouraging and is so proud of other people's achievements. At least that's the impression I get from those around me. But you're not the only one on that, yeah. I, I said it, it's a very supportive program. There are no competition. Even in education, everyone is trying to help each other to reach the top because there are room for everyone. 
you don't need to destroy the other to get to uh, to the next level. And uh, yeah, talents are good. Put it in your personal statement, not in your references. Personal statement, that's what I recommend, not references. Yeah, there's one question linked to, um, I don't know if it's personality, but it's uh, in that part that if we try to get to know you uh, from a different perspective than the academic perspective, like uh, if we would like, would be happy to have, um, um, to have you as a student who can be involved in the community as well, uh, which is um, what we like to. Can students take elective classes in French? It's mandatory if you don't speak French. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not elective. And you can choose one language because all language classes are at the same time. So you can choose one language class. Um, so just to go back here, those are not elective. Those are mandatory classes mm -hmm. during the program. Oh, so fine. everyone will study the same. Mm -hmm. No, all classes are in English. The whole, uh, the official language of the program is English. The interaction with students is in English. Um, instruction, uh, well, I mean, the, the language of instruction is English. So there are no classes available in French for bachelor. Oh, no, he's asking, can students take elective classes in science class? Okay. Uh, yeah, then uh, first year you touch everything and then you're going to... No, no, it's science classes in French, I think. Oh, okay. So no. The whole program, 100% English. Mm. Master in English, bachelor in English. We don't yeah. have French beside the Cycle Ingenieur. Any, any other question? Mm. We overdue, I'm sure everyone so in Turkey. We're very thankful. Now. You're you've been very generous with your time and wonderful explanations. Um I hope everybody is as excited as, as I am. So um I think they are. <laughs> I, I hope we'll uh, see more applicants from Turkey. I, I no doubt, but I will put a re put the recording on the YouTube channel. So we usually get um quite a lot of folks looking at it. You know, I know that we had more registrations that who showed up, but um yeah, I I think we'll have further people watching it later as well. And we thank you. Thanks for the invite. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Lynette, for coming and sharing your experience. Thank you, Lynette. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me, I guess. Thank <laughs> you. And thanks everyone for joining and uh, and coming and, and learning more about our program and uh, institution. Much appreciated. Have a have a good night. Bye bye. everyone. Bye-bye. We do it whenever you want, Yasin. We can do it again next year. I would love, we would love that. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Bye -bye. A lovely evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.